just receive that. Amen. Know that God has designed good things for you. And you guys receive a wonderful day. Yeah, thank Amen. You. Amen. Amen. It's all good. Amen. So, he said, Satan comes immediately to steal the word from their heart. So, obviously, your heart has something to do with it. Now, I want you to go with me, please, over to uh, uh, Mark chapter 6. So, your heart has something to do with the breakthrough that God has. Your heart has something to do with overcoming fear. Your heart has something to do with you walking by faith. Your heart has something to do with you receiving healing. Your heart has something to do with God's design for you. Okay? So let's have a look at this. Ver, uh, chapter 6 of Mark, verse 1, he says, And he went from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. Went to his own country. Went to Simcoe. You went to your job. You went to your family outing. You went to the picnic. You went to wherever your friends were. You went to wherever your job was. You went to wherever people knew you. And Jesus went there from his own, uh, came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? Such mighty works are performed by his hands. So, if you'll notice, there's two tones in there. Number one, the people that knew him started to recognize him and said, Hey, this Jesus that we're listening to, this person that we're listening to, it said he began to teach in the synagogue. So first of all, you always need to be taught. You need to be taught. You know, that, that is what is so powerful. I'm always happy when I see uh, the little book on Mark's dash in his truck. I'm trusting he's carrying it into Bible study. All right. Is he bringing it into Bible study? Good, because the battlefield is in the mind. And so as they're being taught, you cannot put a value. Some of that stuff is actually better than even church, okay? But when he taught in the synagogue, he started to teach the word. And when he began to teach the word, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given him? Such mighty works are performed by his hands. Now we notice... That this is being said, and we also know from the passage before, that immediately Satan comes to steal. So suddenly we got miracles being performed, people are being blessed, it's a happy, happy place, right? It's going well, life is good, people are getting healed, people are getting happy, right? There, there are some things that are going on that it's like right on, all right? The next verse, is this just not typical of you and I's life? You could, you could, if you think about it, you can think of situations where you go, yeah, you're right. Immediately Satan has come to steal the word. How many conversations have we had with people where you're in the middle of telling them something good, and immediately Satan will come in with a little barb, well, you know, after all the economy's turning bad, and I don't know if you should even bother applying for that job, or, you know, I don't know how many jobs are really going to be out there because we're all going to, you know, sink instead of swim and immediately it changes the course of what you're thinking and what you're believing oh most marriages don't work how dare you go to marriage counseling it can't work and it changes the atmosphere of what you're thinking and what you're believing and it said is this not the carpenter's son of mary the brother of jesus joseph judas and simon and are not his sister her sister his sisters here with us and so they were offended at him now you think about that Jesus had just done all these great things. Lives were being changed. That's the positive here. But the reality was they said, I know the street he grew up on. I know the history. Maybe you and I were honest and said we've all got a history. But how many know through Jesus, that history does not have to stop you. Through Jesus, it's not, the Bible says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become have become brand new. There are some people in this building even now need to recognize that, that if you've allowed, if you've invited Jesus to come into your heart, if you've let him begin to move into your life and change your life, the Bible says old things are passed away. You are now a new creation. Do you know what a new creation is? It means something unheard of before. Something unheard of before. We saw some weird things in Guatemala. There was a Remember the first night we were there crawling around on the wall? I don't know if it was a salamander or something or a gecko. I mean, it was a gecko. 
but I had never saw one before. I never saw one before, okay? And, and so that was something that, you know, I'd heard of it, but I'd never saw it. You see the one on TV, but it's a lot different in person, okay? Well, unheard of for me before, all right? Your life, when you receive Jesus Christ, the world's going to look at you and go, I've never heard of that person. But the enemy's going to say, oh, no, no, let me tell you about that person. And you need to begin to move higher than that and say, I don't care what the town thinks. I don't care what the brothers think. I don't care what the sisters think. I'm a new person in Christ, which means old things are passed away. Because there's going to be lots of opportunity for people to get offended and they will try and stop you. Amen. Don't allow the, the offense to stop you. And it says here, but Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and among his own relatives and in his own house. Now, this, I want you to catch this. We would all agree that they all recognized it was Jesus. We would all agree that they recognized that Jesus had done many miracles and performed many mighty things. But what can we also say happened after these people started to say, Is this not the carpenter's son? What happened after they started to say, is this not the Jesus that lived on the street by me? The Bible says they got offended at Jesus. Amen? They got offended at Jesus. What offense in your life are you allowing in to distract you and pull you away from what God has for you? What offense? You say, well, Pastor, offense can affect me. I'm Teflon to offense. I'm, I, I, can, I can withstand any offense because I just can. Well, let's look here. And Jesus said, A prophet is but not without honor except in his own country. And now he, verse 5, he, Jesus, could do no mighty work there except he laid a hands on a few sick people and he healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief and he went about the village in the circuit teaching. He marveled. And I've told you guys before, the only time people marvel is usually if I'm at a buffet. They will marvel. There's not a lot of times in the Bible when Jesus marveled. But Jesus marveled at their unbelief. But he just told us a moment ago, that case of unbelief, it represented their offense. He said, now he could not do a mighty work. Think about that. Think about Jesus, the Son of God, was limited. It wasn't that his power was limited, but those people could not receive what God wanted for them because their hearts were plugged up with offense. Amen. It's not good to have your heart plugged up with offense. It's not good to let those stony things or those, those thorny things begin to block what God has. I mean, we're so you think about it. We're so careful about, well, we better make sure we don't have cholesterol. And we better make sure that we have, you know, we can take an aspirin to cause your blood to be thin so it flows through. And I've done the, all the salmon pills and all of those things to make sure, right, that your heart stays good. But then it comes to our own lives and we go, we try and take care of the body. But your head, you disconnect it and go, well, I'm just going to do whatever I want as a Christian. And I'm going to say whatever I want and be whatever I want and be negative and be offended and be... And the bottom line is, it says that it stopped Jesus. So if it's stopping Jesus, why wouldn't it stop you and I? Amen. Just a thought. So it says that it limited Jesus. So the good news is this. If it's limiting you, you can take the limits off. Amen. Think about it. Last week I said, remember a couple weeks ago, remember I went, when I talked to you about catching chickens? And when those chickens were released, if they fell out of the cage, they'd sometime lay there on their side, and they'd kind of flap their wing a little bit. But they were just, they, it's almost like they felt like they were still in captivity. And the only way to get them to get up and get going again was to maybe give them a little slap, you know, give them a little kick, give them a little shove to get them moving. And then they'd kind of get up and get on all twos and flap their little wings and kind of trot off. But as long as they thought they were in captivity, they would lay there on their side almost waiting to die. Is that not like our lives sometimes? You become overwhelmed in being overwhelmed. There's nothing, you're not a bad person for feeling that way. But the bottom line is Jesus has made a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. And Jesus has given us a few things that would say this is a huge blessing blocker for your life. If you want to stop Jesus from moving in your life, then let's continue to do what they did to Jesus and it will stop Jesus. Now think about that. Because you see, if you go to a church that's just as, well, God is all-powerful. He just does whatever he wants. 
It's not that God doesn't want to do. They limited Jesus because of their unbelief. God is moved by faith, not fear. God is moved by belief, not unbelief. Now think about that. What do I mean by that? Okay, we've talked about it many times, but how do you become born again? The Bible says if you believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. So what does salvation mean? That means that that separation that says, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So with the heart, the Bible says, you're believing, and with your mouth, you're confessing that. Amen. Well, that same ingredient is what you need to live your life by. Amen. Because you'd say, well, I, I don't really believe in God, and I don't believe in stuff, and I don't believe anything, so therefore, but you're actually believing something. You're believing the reverse of what God said to do. But if you're believing on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at that point, your believer needs to see you have some action with your mouther and then with your lifer. You get that? So if things are going backwards in your life, maybe we're doing the same thing that these people that were hanging around Jesus and go, well, I don't know, nothing good ever comes my way. My whole family, they all die of heart attacks at 38. Mm -hmm. Right? I remember thinking that. How old was your father? 45. 45. I thought he was 42. I thought I was doing well. But uh, I can't tell you the number of times the enemy has brought those thoughts and brought those yeah. thoughts and brought those thoughts. What happened in your life that somehow you question, well, hmm, I don't think God's able to fix this one. I don't know if God can do this one. And Satan immediately brings fear and says, it can't work. It can't work. It's too late. It can't work. Too far gone. It can't work. It can't work. Maybe it's not about you. Maybe it's another fearful situation about somebody else. But when you begin to take authority over that and say, wait a minute here. This is the one thing, though, i got to tell you, the one thing that stopped Jesus was these people were starting to go, oh, this Jesus, I know where he came from. I know his family. I know his family didn't live a perfect life. And it stifled and stopped what God wanted to do. I ask you this today. I won't keep you much longer. Are there things in your life that you say, hmm, I'm going to harbor my resentment because of my past hurt. I'm going to harbor my past failures. I'm going to harbor my past insecurities. I'm going to harbor my stuff because it's my stuff. And you can do that. You can die doing that. But the bottom line is it said Jesus could do no mighty work because they were there. 